Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a university based video. I did say that when uni was over, when I'd had my rest, I'd be back and I'm here to do a video about first year. So first year has been a bit of a roller coaster, you know, and I'm just going to share that with you guys. There's been good parts, there's been bad times, it's been just ugh, all over the place, but I have decided to make this video to maybe inform people that are going to Warwick, people that are just at other unis and want to know about Warwick, and just, it's a video about first year in general. So I'm going to split the video into segments, and I'm going to try and put the timestamps in the description box somewhere on the screen. So if there's like a preferred segment you want to listen to about Warwick or about uni, go to the description box and you will see the timestamps below. I've also got like notes on what I have to say because there's things I don't want to miss. Like there's things I want to say about Warwick and the Q&A part of the video will be at the end. So if you did ask questions on my Instagram, which will be somewhere on the screen or down below, then that part is going to be at the end because I just want to cover everything first answer your questions are. I'll do like a little introduction for myself so I study sociology at Warwick University I'm in my first year and I picked sociology because it was literally that one subject like everyone has that one subject that they're just good at and for me it was sociology like it just it became like second nature for me so I was just like let me just pick what I'm good at and hope for the best but like I know the advice segment is not now but in terms of picking subjects for uni it is good to pick what you're good at, but also keep in mind stuff like, I don't know, future prospects, like jobs, careers. If you want to be like an architect, it wouldn't make sense to do, I don't know, like a medicine degree because they, they just don't correlate. So obviously keep in mind your career. But if you don't know what you want to do in the future, which is completely fine, then go for what you're good at because at least you know you will strive to do your best. Because I've noticed when you're doing a subject you actually like, like I said in my sixth form video, you're going to do better in it. Like you're just going to try to do better in it because you actually enjoy it. But yeah, let's not dive into the advice segment right now. So yeah, um, Warwick, I just thought it was like a good university to go to. Like in terms of like the ranking and stuff, it's quite good for sociology. And even just in general as a university, I do realise that most people that go Warwick are here doing econ sciences business accounting like i i would say personally this is an econ school but you didn't hear that from me but yeah it doesn't matter like the other subjects they have a range of subjects and they're all just as good but yeah a lot of people here do econ and business and stuff they put a lot into that business school i'll tell you that for free i'll tell you that right now but that's besides the point so now I'm going to talk about like accommodation at Warwick. So there's various accommodations, but I'm going to start with like the process of like applying and stuff like that. So once you choose Warwick as your firm on UCAS, there's like a little stage where like obviously they're just like getting all their students in. And then there's a process where you have to apply for accommodation. I would say apply as soon as possible. Obviously this video is going to be out sometime in July. And I feel like by now you should be able to apply for accommodation. As soon as it opens up, apply. Even though it's not like on a first come, first serve basis, whatever the, the saying is, it's like they will give to those that have applied the quickest, I do think. Because I applied very late. When I tell you I applied in August, that very late. Like I knew that I wasn't going to get what I wanted, but I still had hopes. You know, I still had hopes. So you apply for six accommodations, I think it is, and you have to pick some en suite and then some that are shared. You're not allowed to just pick en suite. They might change it, you know, they might change it. I picked Heron Bank, Lakeside, Sherbourne, and then I had to pick like three other that were not en suite. And also the, if you apply late, there's not gonna be all the options available on the list like when i applied not all of the accommodations were available on the list because like i think they were capacity or they were just i don't know they just weren't on the list and the ones that weren't on suite that i had to apply for were westwood tossel i think and one of the other ones you know i don't really remember because you know I'm not on campus but yeah then you apply 
you have to wait a couple weeks. I'm telling you, people in different universities already knew where they were going. They were already at their campuses. Warwick delayed. I don't know why we were waiting. People were really waiting because if you don't get what you want, you have to now try and find something else like I did. But lucky for me, someone sent a link to Westwood Student Muse where I'm at right now. So I already knew like, oh, I might come here. And I did. But they really delayed, like they took their time. But anyways, they'll get back to you. They'll tell you what you got. They're always gonna give you something. I remember, and I don't know if it's changed, but once you decline the offer, that's it. Like you can't go back and be like, oh, can I have that offer please? Like I made a mistake. No, you just, you declined it. I don't know if you like could appeal and be like, oh please, I made a mistake. Can I get my accommodation back? But as far as I'm aware, once you like decline it, that's it. Like you can't go back. But yeah, I'm going to like, include pictures of accommodation. I do feel like, in my personal opinion, the top three, and they're all en suite by the way, because I honestly knew I was never sharing a bathroom with anyone. In this panoramic, even just in general, I'm just not about to do that. Like, no, please. But to each their own, if that's something you're fine with, that's, that's you, but me, I wasn't ready to do that. So the en suite accommodations that I feel like are the best, in my opinion, is, Sherbourne, Lakeside and Heron Bank simply because they're en suite like the colour coordination is giving Victorian 18th century whatever but because they're en suite they automatically go to the top but um yeah I don't know it depends Bluebell and Arthur Vic are I think the most expensive and Bluebell most of the times you're gonna see many international students there because the international students have the coin to be paying i think it's like 181 pounds a week if i did that i would not even have money for groceries i would not be able to afford the lifestyle that i have amassed even though my lifestyle is giving broke but boozy on a budget i would not be able to afford it if i lived in bluebell also you can get an estimate of what your student finance is going to be if you see that the rent for the whole year is way more than my, your student finance bursary and money that your parents could give you do not go for that because you're going to be paying rent and then you're going to be starving starving to just just to live nice it's not worth it it's uni this is not like i don't know high living you just need to get a place that you're comfortable with looks nice decent enough but it doesn't have to be a flipping mansion okay it doesn't have to be 10 10 just where you're staying to study that's literally it so yeah make sure you work out like the money and that you have enough to pay rent then to have grocery money and then to like go out lifestyle blah 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 all together like calculate it make sure you have that kind of money i just want to say in regards to like this is a cross between accommodation and the friends part i do feel like you're gonna have to get along to to a degree with your flatmates because you can really have tough times with your flatmates tough times never last but you can have tough times with your flatmates in terms of cleanliness because you're sharing a kitchen you're sharing fridges freezers you're gonna have to and if you're even sharing bathrooms then you're gonna have to talk to them way more like i've noticed like in my accommodation yeah, you can be the one that's taking the bins out. Yeah, you can be the one that's cleaning. But if they notice, okay, Joan's gonna do it every time we leave it. You're gonna become the house cleaner. You're gonna become the maid of your accommodation, of your flat. And you don't want that. You honestly don't want that. I would say try have a rotor between your flatmates, who takes the bins out, who cleans this. And even you yourself, yes, you, you have to be cleaning up after yourself. Mommy and daddy aren't here anymore. You gotta clean up after yourself, right? You gotta do the work yourself because no one is gonna do it for you. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is freshers. Obviously, freshers was a bit tough because we were in a pandemic. But did that stop us? Honestly and truly, if you're in uni, did that stop us? Did a pandemic that has killed many people, did that stop us? It did not. And these clips I'm about to include are the proof. Mum and Dad, I'm sorry, but this is what I was doing first term of university. 
So obviously, I remember in like the first week of September, ACS group chats had like been made for like all the universities and I remember being in like the Warwick one of course and people were sending links to like motives that were gonna happen like when I say proper motives that you actually have to get like a wristband for and stuff like that and I'm thinking mm, you can try but I'm not gonna take that risk like I personally didn't pay for any of these events because I, like I just thought it wasn't gonna happen I already knew they were gonna get cancelled and what do you see weeks later in the group chat? Hey, did anyone go to this motive? Is this motive even happening? They got locked off because by the time it got to like October slash November, like Boris put us in that lockdown 2.0 and then you couldn't really go out to clubs and like places like that. So a lot of these freshers motives, demon time, all you, I mean, first of all, people are going to the demon time motive. Stay away from me. But Midlands Madness. Midlands Madness didn't happen. Demon time didn't happen. No. You had to make the motives yourself. Personally, from what I saw, obviously I wasn't really on campus like that, but we had to just make the motives at campus because you couldn't have these, like, when I say motive motives, I mean like in like a proper club type thing, you couldn't really do it because we were in lockdown 2.0, but there were still some places that were open from what I saw, from what I saw. I wasn't there myself, but things were still going on. The most active place during Freshers, and to this day, to this day, Sherbourne. Sherbourne and Roots are the most active places in jet, like for anything. It could literally just be Friday. Someone will go outside with a speaker and then you'll see like 50 people turn up within the hour. Like I feel like those places are the best like for motives on campus. However, if you don't like the party lifestyle, depending on how the next year is gonna be like, but if it's anything like this year, if you don't like the party vibe, I would suggest avoiding Roos and Sherbourne because that's where most of the motives happen. You will literally be standing outside. You could, in fact, you could be like at a distance from Roots and you can still hear the music. You can still hear the people shouting like, if you don't like that lifestyle, it's not for you. It is not for you. Made the most of like freshers in the pandemic. However, next year, that's our freshers. I don't think people understand. Next year is the first year's freshers. Not the ones that are going to uni now. It's my year. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is like making friends and societies and all that good stuff during the pandemic and first year slash like first term. Cause I think the best time to make friends at uni is first term because if you don't make them in first term like i feel like everybody has their kind of cliques and groups by second term and it's kind of hard to then try and make friends down there that line but you still can i personally think it helped me to make the friends i made in first term so i had that one group that i could like go to and just be like not reliant on but like just have to chill with than if I just had here and there friends. Because the thing is, at Freshers, you're going to just see people and be like, oh, here's my snap, here's your snap, da, da, da. Like, you're gonna be socializing, networking, if you will. And you're gonna make a lot of friends, but you need to have like a solid something, like a, just a, like two or three people that like, you can study with, you can chill with, you can do your shopping with, that, that you can just vibe with. Because loneliness does hit, at uni so it's good to have a, like some kind of support network but yeah i say those avenues are the best ways to make friends because you'll find people that are similar to you like if you know you like a type of sport you will find people in like let's say i don't know tennis society you're gonna find like-minded people or i don't know like rugby society football society you're gonna find people that are like you and it's gonna be easier to like socialize with them because you have like that common ground that you can talk about which is really helpful i feel like 
I don't know if people really talk about this a lot, but obviously going to uni, you're away from your parents, you're away from your family, like you're away from people that are like telling you what to do basically. And I feel like for people that are, have been like caged in the sense like they don't get to do a lot, uni is the time for you to just like do whatever but you need to know that it's not everything that you must do like you don't have to try everything just because you've never done it before what you've never tried this so you're gonna just go and do it because five people in your flat are doing it like obviously know that everything you're doing at uni is because you want to do it not because tom dick and harry said yeah let's go and sniff a line da -da 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 -da. no do it because you actually genuinely want to do it don't do it because you see people doing it and i feel like it's not by force like yeah people will be like oh you're not drinking oh you're not smoking let them say that you don't have to corrupt or change your morals because of uni and i feel like freshers does like push that thing of like mm, drinking games da -da -da, da -da -da. like you don't have to do it you don't have to do it to have fun if you want to do it that's on you like that's fine we're not judging anyone that does we're just saying don't change yourself because of uni because there's morals that you've learned from home from yourself like you can still maintain that and have fun going to work you live in Coventry so I'll just associate everything with things to do in Coventry personally there are things to do in Coventry I will include clips I probably have included clips there are things to do in Coventry but most times out of 10 you're gonna have to go to the city centre like you're like warwick is like probably 30 20 minutes away from the city center by bus cab is like 10 15 minutes more things are like in the city center like they have like restaurants pubs clubs oh oh um shopping places all that in the city center which is closer to the university of coventry but there's quite a lot to do there's a lot of food options in terms of like when i say food options i mean like restaurants when i speaking like ethnically right next to work there's not a lot of like black hair shops food shops any kind of shop that you would want as like a black or ethnic minority you know there's not a lot of that but when you go to the city center like central cob there's a lot of things for like there's more halal shops there's more black asian ethnic shops there's just more of that in the city center so if you're a person that you know you like your home food go to the city center or better yet bring it from wherever you're from i'm from london so you know that london has the stuff bring it from london freeze it store it keep it because i didn't find a lot of like african or ugandan shops around it i have not though let me be real there's no ugandan shops here let me just say that so yeah yeah moving on it is a disaster you need to have some sort of budget a budget for groceries a budget for lifestyle when i say lifestyle like going out um hanging out with friends whatever it may be and then like a budget for just other things in general like transport and stuff like that i tried to have like a budget of 100 pounds a week not for just groceries that was like what i would spend in a week but you have to be realistic there's not gonna be like it's not gonna be every week that you stick to that budget but you should try to have some sort of budget on how much you spend that's what i would say to myself like joan spend 100 pounds a week you will end up spending 250 there was a week where i, I easily spent like 250 i don't know where i don't know how the money will just go and when you have that contact list you'll just tap in tap in tap in apple pay you'll tap in you're not seeing the money leave then you check the bank account then you realize then you realize things are ooh, ooh. but have some sort of budget so that you like can manage your money better transport is pretty cheap around here i think they do this purposely around universities like you can literally get ubers for two pounds three pounds bus around here is two pound 20 per tap but it's four pounds for the whole day so like if you tap more than once then it's going to be four pounds for the whole day um i think there are like yearly monthly bus passes around here but i didn't buy them because i was just i didn't think i was going to use the bus that much anyways in terms of groceries for Warwick, there is an Audi, Tesco, Iceland, and then there's like 
other shops. Okay, you're gonna think Tesco is cheap. Go to Aldi. I was going to Tesco for like the first couple of weeks. And then when I switched to Aldi, I, I realized that Tesco was robbing me. It was daylight robbery, okay? Another thing I wanted to talk about was mental health and just support at Warwick. Um, this is a bit of a tough one. I do think that Warwick says they provide the help for their students and are there for their students. But in my personal opinion, I just feel like it's like most unis say that to say that. And unfortunately, I don't think Warwick does provide the most support for their students. Like they will send you that one email like well-being and support team, da da da, reach out if you need help, don't be alone in this pandemic. But let me tell you, first term, I feel like a lot of students can relate. That loneliness hit. It doesn't matter if you're the most sociable person on the planet. There was a point in first term where people, everybody felt a bit of loneliness. You know what? I will speak for myself. That loneliness really hit. Like you have people you can talk to, you have people you can link and see, but you're just like, damn, I'm in this room by myself. I'm doing my lectures by myself. I'm not sitting next to anyone in no lecture room. I'm not going to seminars like that. Everything is online. You're just sitting in your room and you're just like, damn, like this is me. I'm cooking just for me, cleaning just for me. Like everything is just you and yourself. And you can get them days where you're just like, oh, this is, this is not it. I want to leave. I got to go. And then like you, you refocus and you remember like this ain't the end of the world. Like it is important for you to reach out to your flatmates and your friends when you're feeling low. I am finally on the Q&A segment. So this part is the Q&A part. I asked you guys to send questions in on my Instagram. So I'm going to answer the questions the best I can. And if you have more questions, leave them in the comments. Ask me on my Instagram. I am more than welcome to answer your questions. Okay, so the first question was A-levels versus uni, which one is harder? So in my opinion, taking sociology into consideration, I do believe that uni is harder. I know they say, oh, the transition from A-levels to uni, it's easy, it's not that hard. I feel like it is a tough transition. Like it's, I don't think it's that easy. Like they make it seem like it is the easiest thing. It is not in my opinion. The next question, what's your least favorite thing about university? Um, My least favorite thing out of all things, I guess I would say was the support of uni. Like, especially from Warwick. Like I was mentioning before, the way they were, were not supporting their students in various movements that were going on on campus. I think that was my least favorite thing. What's the best thing about university so far? Um, I think coming from a family where I have like a lot of siblings, I enjoy my independence a lot. Like, I just like the idea of having my own space. Like I can do whatever I want in my room. I decide like what I want to eat, when I want to wake up, when I want to do this. Obviously, um, <laughs> my sleeping schedule was really messy. You know, sleeping at 12 in the afternoon is not a good thing. Sleeping at 8 a.m. is not a good thing. You know, waking up at 5 p.m., not the best decision, but they were my decisions and I kind of liked having that autonomy. Next question is, are you excited for second year? Um, socially, yes, I'm excited for second year because new people, opportunities to make new friends, just, You've seen what happened first year, you know what not to do. Um, academically, I feel like it's gonna be tough because first year for me didn't count. So I always think when something like a test or a grade or a subject doesn't count, the next part is always gonna be tougher. Like that's just what I think. So I feel like it's gonna be tough, but I'm excited. Okay, so another question was, was how much money would you need to get a studio flat in Coventry? So most of the studio flats are in like Central Cove and from what I've seen, the really good ones can be up to like 190 a week, 170 a week. The next question, I got this question quite a bit, is if I didn't pick sociology as a degree, what other course would I have picked? I was going to go into like finance and accounting, but then I had a little 
I have a change of mind. If I was gonna do another course though, it would have either been finance and accounting or economics, but I realized that I had a stronger passion for sociology, so I just stuck to that. Okay, another question is, do you have any advice for people that find socializing hard? So I did initially come with the mindset of, I'm gonna stay in my room, stick to my books. I don't wanna socialize, I'm scared to socialize. Like this is too much, too many people. But I feel like you need to branch out. Like I was blessed and lucky to have like that one person, they know who they are that would like take me out of my comfort zone, like and force me to like actually come out of my shell. And when you actually do that, you find really good people, like random people that you'll get along with. A few more questions came through while I was, you know, having my lunch. And one of them was, is the thing about which is true. Let me tell you, yeah, as a Christian, as a Christian, I am very strong about my faith and you will find witches and demons, whether they know it themselves, you're gonna find some crazy people. Like I said before, you're going to find the craziest people. And I feel like I have heard stories about witches in uni so please be careful with who you let into your room because you don't know what energies what spirits what vibes you're bringing into your room so be very careful with guys i can't stress it enough i can't stress it. be careful be careful please another question was if i got to do it all over again differently what would i change the major thing i would change is how i socialize i feel like i kept to myself too many times like yes i tried to socialize but there were definitely times where i could have stepped out of my comfort zone and really pushed myself that extra bit and i think that's one thing i would have changed another question somebody asked is would you recommend moving out for university and like i said in the accommodation section i really think you gain a lot by moving out like you gain your independence just a valuable experience in general like there's so many things you learn like if you don't know how to cook uni is the time you will learn if you don't know how to clean and take care of yourself uni is the time you will learn just simply paying rent bills utilities like you learn all of that okay and the last question was what was the hardest thing about living away from my family so like i've mentioned in previous videos i have a kind of big family there's like seven of us total so you literally go from having different people you can chill with any minute like if one sibling is busy i go to the next i go to my mom and go to my dad like i have all these people to chill with to just live by myself just be me and myself in this big big room it's not a big room but like for one person this is a decent sized room and yeah you have friends at uni but like you can't bother them the same way you bother siblings like you know you can bother your siblings differently so it's kind of just like having to make a new support network I'll wrap this video up just general advice that i have for people starting first year so the main thing is as fun as uni can be don't forget like why you're here like obviously you're here to get your degree and then at the same time don't forget that you are allowed to have fun like i feel like you shouldn't come to uni and just be so strict and hard on yourself like oh studying revising every single day yes it's important i'm not saying you shouldn't but i am also saying it is very important to have a social life and do try and have as much fun as you can overall i would say my experience at work has been really good i can't wait to see what second year has to offer but if you have any more questions let me know in the comments or on my instagram and i will see you in the next one do you see it?